The excitement. Welcome back to another installment of Yes, You Guessed It. The culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, man. That's true. That's how I wake up in the morning. Ding, ding, ding. So this morning's <laughs> culinary hotline theme is all about Cape Malay culture. And one thing that gets passed down from generation to generation is definitely the food. And we have a very special guest who's going to be joining, Chef Clem and I, to show you a recipe that will blow your mind. When I heard masala steak and then I heard omelette, in the same sentence. I'm like, breakfast has now come. Breakfast is here. I'm ready for this. So please welcome somebody who is part of the Cape Malay cultural experience. This particular person will show us exactly what to do, how to do it, how to move, mm. how to groove. Please welcome Feruza Abrams! Woo! Welcome, Feruza. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So happy to have you in the kitchen. Oh, thank this you so much. This is exciting, man. Yeah. This really is. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy to have you. The Cape Malay experience is so important. And naturally, we want to get the, the flavors right, which yeah. is just a homage to everything. Yeah. So you are naturally going to make sure that the uh, masala steak mm. omelette. Omelette, yeah. How did this recipe come about? <laughs> you. you see, whilst I love cooking, I'm also a lazy cook. I'm also a smart cook. So this is absolutely my go-to meal prep dish for the week. Because we love masala steak Gatsby. Yes, mm -hmm. Masala steak ruti, pet cook. Oh. Sandwiches, just about anything. And I think as South Africans and Cape Tonans, we love stuffing food in pockets. But now today we are making an omelette. So I came up with the idea that if I had a batch of this in my fridge, yes. my family could go to it. And you know, it gives me less work and they can just decide what they want to do with it on the day. And the thing about making it and making a bigger batch is because it gets better the longer it's Absolutely. actually in the fridge. That was, you took the words out of my mouth. Mm. And then you know what? It lasts about two days. It should last a week, but it's gone. Mm. So um, the flavors just develop. It just gets better and better. And this particular one, I love the fact I'm adding a little bit of vinegar. It's got that lovely sweet and sour Cape Malay oh, flavors to yes. it. And you can really use it up by putting bell peppers and mushrooms. Today, we're making a very basic one. But don't be fooled by the word basic, it's yummy. So uh, peppers, mushrooms, any vegetables that you want to, you can add even some butter beans. Perfect. Think, think um, bunny chow. I'm hungry, man. <laughs> Let's start making. I'm hungry. Oh, like, yeah. you know, this is like, I'm going to be like that please. person. I was like, Mommy, I'm hungry, man. <laughs> Mommy, please. And, and have fruit. Have yeah. fruit. Yeah. Go, have an apple. Have so let's start ju jumping yeah, in there. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> if you have any questions about this recipe, please, 063 408 8863. Remember, this is indeed a culinary hotline. So if you have any questions, please throw them our way. A little voice note. Please introduce yourself and ask away. Now, let's go. What are we going in first? Okay, we've got a little bit of um, oil. You could use olive oil, coconut oil, sunflower oil and basically your curry or masala steak is only going to be as good as your paste so it starts mm, there okay. okay so i can see there's a little bit of sizzle the first things are going to go in a little bit of the um, whole spices so we've got bay leaves um curry leaves and then we're going to put chili and then prepare to stand back because it's going to give okay. you that no, little... i enjoy that okay i welcome, <laughs> I welcome that i love yeah. it when that little bit of cough in the back and so it tells me yeah. that somebody has properly uh, you know, given me the chili I need. There we go. That's what I want. And then you can actually smell it. Do we have a spoon? Yes. Yeah, so we've got, we've got the we go. spatula there. Spatula. So we're doing this. This is going to flavor the oil. And I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. And we're not going to want to do that too long. You can go in with the onions because you don't want the spice to burn. Got you. Okay. And you can see that I've sliced the onion quite thickly. Generally, when you're making a curry, it's tiny pieces, mm -hmm. but um, steak's going to cook for a while, ah. so that will just yield down, and it also gives that nice chunky oniony flavor that we love. I love the texture of like chunky and onion also in there. onion itself, like economically growing up when there's not a lot to go around, an onion can it make something it, fuller. Absolutely. You know, and, absolutely. and I think that's what I love about it, yeah. because, and also for some reason, you know, the head of the <clears> household always got the meat, and then the light has got the sauce. Like, we got the sauce and rice, you know what yes, I mean? Yes. And it's like, but where's the meat? Where's the meat? It's, it's, we got the onions. So, yeah. this is why my appreciation for onions yeah. is that, because I love the fact that I took food a lot further growing up, and more importantly, yeah. the flavor that an onion takes on, it can flavor the entire dish. Yeah. Are I you love. saying it's the, it's the meat of vegetables? It is the Here meat of vegetables. Oh, I get you. The, the, okay, I get you. No, because uh, I didn't see meat. That's that your pass, of course, is the meat. They only get the chunks, and you're like, okay. Thanks for the rice and sauce. What I love about this dish, you can absolutely use chicken in here as well, 
or just whatever vegetables you think's busy dying in the fridge, you can make a vegetarian oh, version I like that. that as well. I do like that. <laughs> you can do a vegetarian. It's that so pumpkin now, that's in the bottom, that's why. <laughs> now we're going to go in with our ginger garlic. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ginger garlic and our spices. Oh, this is Okay, so we've got already. some cumin, coriander, turmeric, smoked paprika, a little bit of masala. You can use your mom's masala, whatever masala you want to. Everybody's and a little bit of a salt, yeah. I mean, can I, can Please I just, do. here we go. Did you say you can use your mommy's masala? Yeah. Your mommy's what's masala. In, what's in your masala? Ooh, here it comes. Can you, can you share? I can. You can't. <laughs> you cannot I can. Share. I can. You know, the thing is, my grandmother and my mom, they cook with ratios. Mm -hmm. So, for example, turmeric and coriander will always be the same, whether it's two teaspoons or one teaspoon. And then cumin will be half of that because it's so pungent and strong mm -hmm. and bitter if you're heavy handed with it. And then your chili powder is always to your family's taste. Are you cooking for the kids? Are you cooking for dad or the uncle that wants to be blown out of the kitchen? Um, but ratios, that's how I grew up. It was never a gram of this or, or anything like that. It was ratios, and that makes up my mom's masala. So um, here we go. Smell, hey, like the a little bit of food. sugar. Yes, the sugar. Yes. yes. So you know what? Sugar and for vinegar, me is this makes it Cape Malay. So the sugar for me has always been in association with tomato. Yeah. Because, mm. you know, if you use the tomato and the sugar, they just work together. Yeah. It brings out the flavor. Yeah. Can so I good. tell you something about this, uh, Chef Grim? It looks um, familiar to you. What does it look like? Well, it's it smells fish. like pickled it's fish. Pickled, yeah. There we go. Absolutely. So the other nice hack about this is that on a day when I'm making this, half of that can go to my pickled fish and the other half comes to my masala. I get, can I also tell you this? Yeah. As an addition to a toasted cheese sandwich, just this. Just that. Yes. Toasted cheese sandwich. Okay, don't Yum. do that to me. Yes, yes, yes. I can I'm see ready. that. Oh. I can see it. Okay, wow. so while we we are going to continue yeah. this, uh, Feruza and Chef Clem, we're going to fix this up. Of course, if you have any questions, please send it our way. We are ready to answer on 0634088863. The smells in this kitchen are unbelievable. Mm. It's a Cape Malay inspiration. But of course, we want to give you so much more of that. So stick around. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here in S3. I'm diving in. Let's do the meat now. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show, and of course, the culinary on my bling. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Sorry, just, it's the vibe of the entire show today. We still have Feruza Abrams over here from the Cape Malay Cultural Experience. Uh, a host of that particular experience as well as Chef Clem to give you any sort of answers you require in the kitchen. Today we're focusing on Cape Malay a little earlier. We did something so, so beautiful, which was a masala steak omelette. We just want to see what the final result is there, if you don't mind, Chef Clem. The, the masala steak omelette over there, I want to see it. I want you to bring it over and just, that, just please... It's gorgeous, it's perfect, and it can be kept apparently for a week, but will never will because it's it never lasts. <laughs> It'll never it just, last. It basically makes you less. <laughs> it does, absolutely. I'm going to pop it over here for a second. It is so good. Oh, everybody, yes. everybody in the studio has said, that's mine, that's mine, yes. that's mine. You're wrong. Is it mine. yours? In it's mine. Mine. We're okay. looking for the pen. <laughs> I'll go find I will go find it. <laughs> okay, well, this is how it goes. Also, you know what? We've got a couple of voice notes. Yeah. I think it's important to share those. So if you want to say anything, 0634088863. Do we have any voice notes for now? Let's take a listen. A very good morning to my espresso family. The Malay food that I really like is the Brayani, acne and tenang food. Thank you so much, Austin Herbal Gardens. Bye. Mm. And then Ridwan, you have something to say as well. I love that acne. Assalamu alaikum. Hope you all well. So yeah, my favorite dish or favorite Cape Malay dish is a few. So if we start with the sweet, it would be malfa pudding with some nice warm custard. Mm -hmm. And then not forgetting the Sunday Kusista. Oh my Every God. Sunday, <laughs> even though I'm in Dubai, I still have it on a Sunday. Then it's either the nice biryani or a nice acne. Yeah, so that's that's a few of my favorite dishes. In Dubai? I feel like you should have Dubai. finished that. Those are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> because... 
the way the Malva pudding and the custard came into play there, I went, I went, I went to Sunday. <coughs> I mean, I'm actually in Sunday now. I'm Sunday mode. Again, and we're doing desserts. And now we're doing some desserts. Yes. So, Ferusa, of course, you've got a dessert that yeah. is apparently the kryptonite in the home with regard to the kids. <laughs> like, if yeah. you make this, they'll do whatever you want. Yeah. Love so, it. so look, um, Malays love making fritters in any form, way or shape. Yes. So, this is a banana fritter, okay? Um, I have a brother, and I hope he's watching, that absolutely loves this because I once left a plate of, like, banana fritters and it was gone in 10 seconds. So this is the fritter, um, fritter culture. So basically you <laughs> want to make a little dough like this. Yeah. Um, and it's really just all-purpose flour, butter, your sugar, your salt. It's basically like a scone dough yes. mix. Mm -hmm. A little bit of baking powder, extra vuma, vanilla. It's the very, vuma? very, and it's then the just the one egg. Okay, the Vuma of the, the Vuma, yeah. David Moss. So we're literally just going to go in there. I'm going to get my hands in there. Unfortunately, there's no other way to do this. And you want to feel the pearls of pebbles of butter. Because you have to feel it. you got to feel it. You can't get that with a machine. You the generations you of want culture to it. coming through into the dough. Exactly. Generally. You want to feel that. In the meantime, that. can you get, put that hands to work? Yes. Here we You're, go. you got to get off bananas. the little pieces, yeah. How many? Feel the banana. How would you like and them chopped, chef? And then you're going to cut them in um, just little... Slices as okay. though you're eating it off the knife, and then it goes into a piece of dough that you've rolled out, yes. like an empanada. Like an empanada, just in order a small round. Uh -huh. Yeah. The banana and then goes you put in. it on the inside, uh -huh. and then it's deep fried. Deep fried. In right. <laughs> Vegetable. I was going to say, what about air fryers? No. no. <laughs> this one you got to deep fry. So this is what I'm looking for. Can you see that? Mm. The other thing that I love about this dough, guys, I use this dough to make scones. I what? also use this dough to make a little empanada style um, pie. Um, and I also use this dough to make twisty, twisties. Oh, so my goodness. So, once again, um, Ooh, yes. me being the lazy cook, but actually the smart cook, you can use this one. You can continue. I was, like, I was, I was, I was just, just <laughs> focusing on you. You know what, Chef Clem, come around okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and I want you to, because the thing is, you Even were standing like idling. Two, yeah. Okay, and the thing is, you know, in any person's kitchen, if you're standing idling, waiting for food, you need to work. So you this either is take what the you want, out guys. or you do the, the dishes. This so let's go. This is what you want. Have a look. Like that. Oh. And then a little bit of buttermilk is going to go in. Ooh. And a little bit of milk. Yes. And we're going to get to that consistency that Chef Clem is working with. I'm ready. And, and um, show me. That's it. And then our oil is, and how do you know the oil is hot enough? You should be able to hold your lovely hand over it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you know it's hot enough. Once again, we're not even using a thermometer. If you can't hold your hand there, the oil's too hot. Because you don't want it to be um, cooked on the outside, yes. raw on the inside. And then all we need to do is get a little simple syrup here, equal parts sugar and water. Yeah. And the fried product is going to go into that and it gives it that lovely glossy and the gloss, Look, the yeah, gloss makes it perfect, really chef. special, doesn't it? Yeah, I just use a one little... One slice? One is perfect. I just use a little bit of egg wash around it and then cover the, close a little bowl and just squeeze off all the little excess and then plonk it in the oil. Okay, There's I'm lots get... of plonking in Malay cooking. Oh. Plonking, no, but plonking, squishing. but I can plonking the, the hands, everything. It's all <laughs> everything. about the culture, it's all but about it's all about them. making sure that you're getting yeah. the entire family involved as well. Exactly. You know, the fam can do this, and I think this is the special thing about food. Food brings you together. You cooking mm. with your senses, see? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to go drop this one and come right back and roll yeah. another one. Thank yeah. you. Look at you go. You're such a good person. So you hold your hand, you got to feel the heat? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think we just need to put that heat on again. It could have possibly... A little higher. There we go. There we go. Okay. So warm enough. You're gonna plonk it in, and it's going to fry. Uh, it's Ready? plonking well. It's plonking there well. There we go. That's I'm back. Exactly I'm right. back. Are you good there? Oh, good. I'm good, there, brother. I'm good. Okay. So this dough. Yeah. We got the leavening agent in there, which is the baking powder. You baking said. Baking powder. But so I can't make it ahead of time, or can I? You absolutely can. Oh, amazing. You can make okay. it. You can freeze it. You can freeze the dough. You can freeze the unsugared um, mm -hmm. one, but you can't freeze the one that's got the sugar on it. Get you. But there's no need because it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. gone oh, in, and I suppose you one second. Oh, yes. <laughs> and okay, so this one's different to the other, like I'm saying, Kuss Sisters, whatever. Yeah. Could we still put toasted coconut on it, or we're going to keep this one nice and plain? Plain. Keep it nice and plain. Yeah. I like that. I don't like to mess with it. It's, it's amazing as it is. Um, and because sister is unique. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> How do you feel about the, the new chefs that are coming out there and taking traditional recipes and then kind of putting their own spin? Is there a level to where you stop? Yeah. So, um, 
I, I think I'm one of those people that love adding a little bit of flavor to mm -hmm. it, but I want to stay true to the flavors, the heritage. I don't really mind what if it looks differently. But for me, I love the Cape Malay flavors. Oh, you know, yes. the concept of a fritter, of a fried item is, is a must. And this is something that during the month of Ramadan, we eat this every day. And you can also substitute the apple with pear, with peaches, Ooh, with yes. um, really just about anything. Every day. And it's once again, yourself, oh, I said, oh. you can put minced curry in here as well, in this dough. You can make a little curry pocket out of it. So this dough is very forgiving, very versatile. That looks absolutely amazing. This recipe is going to be well, in my back pocket. I've actually done forever. one bola as well. So you put your bola in. I would love to put the bola in. And while I put the bola in, remember, if you want to get all of these recipe items, as well as the method, go to expressoshow.com. We are going to bola lick over here with banana fritters, here we go. but try yours and make sure that you just enjoy what is yeah. going to be so I'm a celebration of the to... show today. And Feirusa, you have been amazing. Thank you so much for Thank joining so us here much. today and for all these great recipes. Remember, expressoshow.com. Go grab yours. It's my feel -good I know we gave you two segments of this earlier, but I want to give you another one. It's another round of the Culinary Online Bling! <laughs> As you know, it's Cape Malay theme today, and we could not do this without. In fact, yes, I added this in because I had to. Because sisters, I said this all the way in the beginning of the show, and to show us how these are done, we invited sisters and co-owners of one of the most extraordinarily amazing companies when it comes to Chris Sisters Gourmet Garage. If you haven't heard of it, Vavas J. It's amazing, honestly. So we have uh, Cass and Kelly Cupido as well as Auntie Irma. All right, is going to be showing you exactly how this works. Now, when it comes to Sundays in the Cape and beyond, Thousands of Kusistas have to go to homes. Otherwise, those homes become volatile and people don't like being there anymore. <laughs> Kusista helps you be a home person. So, we have these lovely ladies here who will give us a little recipe. And here's the thing. They can't show you what's in the recipe, but they'll give you some tips today. 63 if you have any questions. Ladies, welcome to our Kitchen but of wait, and Chef Claire. But wait, I just saw another fresh plate coming out. I'm gonna let you do your thing. I'm gonna actually. Are you I'm leaving go us? Eat some cool sisters. You guys, no, you guys are okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this is what happens, right? Chef Kim saw that there was already a, ma a batch made. We were gonna use it for this, but now we can't anymore. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now let's do this, ladies. First of all, welcome to your feel-good breakfast show. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you for obliging and saying yes to my request for cool sisters. Where do we start? Where does it all begin? Cass, you can take us away. Um, it actually starts with my mom. Really? She's Auntie the one, Irma? Auntie Irma. <laughs> she's the one that makes the Kusistas. Auntie Irma, number one is you are looking fabulous this morning. Thank you. Number two is I want to say thank you because I know these are... The, I've tasted these Kusistas before and I'm ready for you. So I'm going to start with you over here. There's a bowl of goodness here. There's some flour. How do we start the process? Must I make it? I would love for you to make one. <laughs> Just in front of me. Don't tell me what's in there just yet. You can okay. Give me that recipe via WhatsApp later. I will do <clears> so. Thank you. That'd be great. So, oh. so now we've Take. got this. So what have we? We've got this dough. The dough already made dough already with so, the secret ingredients inside. The secrets. The secrets. I know love is one. Love has got to be. Love one definitely one. one. Okay. And now we're gonna make these. And this is why I want to watch how these are, are made because. This is the best way to actually understand how good this is. And look at this. The precision that happens through here, Auntie Irma, is just okay. wonderful. We just make a few. And you just roll them up like that, Just eh? like that. She's so quick, eh? And he, I can <laughs> and see. And I just give it a twist and pinch. And I put it on the plate. Then it wow. will rise. So you just twist and pinch? Twist and pinch. And we want to try. Okay, well, that twist, twist and pinch. <laughs> it's very interesting now. Yeah, I see you can twist. Twist, I do twist. Yeah. I mean, I dance. I twist very, very so well twist sometimes. twist and pinch, and then it, let it rise. Okay, so, they're yeah. gonna, so there's yeast in here, so obviously there's, it's yes, going to be rising as yes, you're making it, Yes, we normally right? cover it now in winter. Okay. It takes quite a while, not... Uh, so long, but you just cover it. I'm actually making yeah. it a bit big, but... And, and so while we do this, this is going to rise, and then we get to a point where this will be ready and risen, risen. for Kelly's section for on the Ke far side. Eh? For Kelly or Cassandra to fry, and we always fry at the right temperature. When you and say that, right temperature, can you reveal that? Or that's uh, that is like um, 140 degrees. 140. 
140 degrees. Busy, that means yeah. that if it's not that 140 degrees, then the oil will drain in the cook sister. Oh, you see? that makes sense. So, then. yeah. So then you have a you know, oily cook sister. We don't want that today. Also, yeah. we need to make enough for the Pennsylvanians. So we've got an entire Cape Minstrel group here. I and, see so. So I yeah, should so make it a bit want, smaller. They eh? each, they told me earlier. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you don't mind. But this is this is great. And I think I actually want to watch the, the frying process as well. Because that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And Because personally, when it comes to a cook sister, I don't like a cook sister that's too blonde. I have to have colour. And you obviously have a secret to create the colour. It's got to be dark. And then the klapper van vergelijking, as I call it, must yes. be on the outside. <laughs> and it's got to have a little crunch and then a yes, lot of no. pillowy softness and a bounce in the middle. Yes. And the right type of spice. I can go on. I really can, but I won't now. But this has been good so far. Can we see one go into the oil? I, yeah. I'm, I just, I'm intrigued. Here it comes. Thank you, Auntie Irma. Over to uh, the next station. Cass, okay. be careful of the oil there, please. Yeah. 140, yeah, don't forget. I remember that. Remembering all I these didn't tips. see she test the, yeah. the, the thermometer. Ooh, <laughs> you know, I'm getting trouble all the time in the kitchen. I can tell. With my mom. Yeah. You I can, can see her. here, Carl. It's already turning down. Auntie, I'm going to walk on the side of you. Excuse me. There we go. And we're on this side. Oh, <laughs> this is my favorite part. This is what's happening here. And I just obviously want to. And the great thing about whatever's in that dough, which you will not reveal, I understand is now helping this react to the heat. And Correct. that's where all of those little pockets of air uh, actually start, start in, uh, getting involved there in the middle of this cook sister, which is great. Uh, if I look at this temperature, it's about 163. <laughs> yeah, no, these, these ones are that's a bit... <laughs> Sorry. That is I, really hot. I know, I know temperature. But also, I'd like this. You like the dark ones? I love the dark ones. Some people do, yes. So tell me about this process here. Not to take away from it, but now it's still very hot. Yes. Is this the time where you let it cool and then you go into the hot syrup? Yes. So we let it cool down for a bit. Okay. Um, we pack it in our box, let it um, just cool down. This and then, great. yeah, we get the syrup boiling and then we're ready. So this cools and then the syrup? Yes. Because I heard something about if it's hot to hot, you might actually absorb too much or too... Oh, actually, it won't absorb at all, which is just, uh, something that's very important to note. This is great. Honestly, if you have any questions, Please feel free. Voice notes are welcome. 063 <laughs> 408 8863. Don't send your address because I know you're going to want Gourmet Garage to send your cookie on a Sunday like me, but don't. I will let you know how it tastes. I will, which is great. Um, so once this is done, you pack it uh, you pack it there, and then of course this is a Sunday. Do you have any objections to somebody eating a cousista on a day other than Sunday? No, um, but most people prefer it on a Sunday. Okay. We've got lots of requests uh, during the week for mm. office meetings, funerals, etc. Yes. Um, yeah, and we supply one or two coffee shops on a Friday as well. So. Oh, that's lovely. By the way, Kelly, you've been talking a lot, eh? <laughs> I know. You've been I'm so talking sorry. like just I'm to, waiting get, my can turn. you get a word in, please? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. My turn. No, but also with regard to gourmet garage, what's special about it? Because obviously there's a recipe here that we're not going to have on expressoshow.com, but what is special about gourmet garage for you? It's just a family. I mean, that's what uh, brings everybody together, and we love food. It's the joy you see when someone's eating something you've made. I think that's what that's everything. So yeah, that's gourmet garage in a it, nutshell. It is indeed, and the Kuss sisters are great. I cannot wait for Auntie Irma to pitch up at my house <laughs> with five boxes of Kuss sisters on Only a Sunday. Five. But I do want to try one. Do you mind if I just try you one can of try. them? You can try. It's me. I, it just because I, I wanted to see the syrup that uh, the, that process go in as well. Yeah, let's uh, get it started. And then started. we can get the clapper on, which is yes. great. So let's go. Are we going to do one of those? Yeah. I wanted to see this process before tasting. And uh, do remember, I would love to tell you that the recipe is on expressoshow.com, <laughs> but the recipe will be at Gourmet Garage. That's where it's going to be. So please, if you're ever in Cape Town, uh, do enjoy. And now those, that gets closed. Yes, it gets closed. This is going to oh. steam in the sugar syrup, syrup. Oh, for about two minutes. And then the So there's almost happens. like a sugar steam happening in there. <laughs> it is, it <laughs> is. Just the perfect Stop amount. It. This is the best ever. Uh, we're going to continue thereafter. We're going to do a little of the coconut that uh, gets uh, sort of beautifully cascaded upon your Kuss sisters. That is a bougie way of saying the clapper is going to be thrown on there for lekkerness, but that's fine as well. But we're going to continue this. I'm going to give it a taste as well. Chef Clem might just appear somewhere. He's still eating. But uh, really, if you want to try this, Gourmet Garage in Cape Town, I highly recommend them because sisters are part of this entire thing and it provides energy to anybody who's part of a dancing group, which you may just see a little bit later on your Feel Good Breakfast Show.